Welcome back to the Art of Belt Building. In this episode, we're going to continue fairing the hull with a plane, sandpaper, and fairing compound. In addition, we're going to talk about some fairing tools, make and install the keel, and shape the stem. All of that coming up in this episode of the Art of Boat Building. We pick up where we left off last week in fairing the hull with a hand plane. Now, this is a pretty enjoyable process as that sharp hand plane goes through that cedar really nicely. One of the questions I had was how often I had to sharpen the plane. Well, being that I started with a nice sharp plane and the cedar is soft, I only had to sharpen it one other time. As I had mentioned in the last episode, that it's important you plane on a diagonal. This ensures that you're going to get a nice fair surface. As opposed to planing longitudinally, that is fore and aft, that will create some flat spots that will create an unfair hull. Once this was finished, we could then move on to sanding with the longboard. Like the planing, the initial sanding should also be done on a diagonal. I'm using 60 grit sandpaper here on my longboard. Longboards have gotten the nickname the misery board because you spend hours and hours sanding. For this reason, I think it's really important that the tool feel very comfortable in your hands, no matter what it is that you use. I built this tool out of a Harbor Freight auto body sander. If you'd like to see how I did that, you can see that in Season 2, Episode 27. The tool building portion starts at about the 11 minute mark. However, the entire episode covers the principles of fairing a hull, so it's worth a watch. Feeling the hull with your hand is probably one of the best ways to tell if it's fair. Once the initial sanding is done, it was then time to move on to the fairing compound. I'm using Total Boat's Total Fair for this process. This is a two-part epoxy compound, starting with the part A, which is yellow, which is the resin. And part B, which is the blue, is the hardener. Now the beauty of this is once you get the two mixed together, you get a nice green color. And once you've got it to, it's a complete consistently green color and there aren't any streaks of blue or yellow, you know it's all mixed properly. I started by filling any low spots or gaps in the planks. I then made sure that I went through and filled all of the holes where the screws had been. Once they had done that, I then went over the entire hull with a skim coat of compound. By mixing in small batches, I was able to take my time and go over the hole thoroughly without fear of the compound kicking off and getting hard on me. After waiting overnight for the epoxy to completely cure, I then began the arduous task of sanding it again. Thank you. 
Now once I got the initial sanding all done, I went through and hit a few spots. Hopefully you can see on the camera where it's a little darker that were some spots that were still just a little bit low. Now some of you may have been asking, um, isn't there a mechanical way of sanding the hull? And the answer is yes. Now, if you look back in episode um, 27 from the second season, when I was ferrying the Haven, I used a rotary sander like this one. Now, the great thing about this is that you have a lot of control, and if you want to know more about how this machine works, check out that uh, episode. Now, the problem that I found, in, found with this was that it works great for bigger boats, uh, like a really large boat, like Steve's Arabella, or even the Haven, where the shape isn't quite as drastic as this little dinghy. So I got to thinking about that, and if there is something, and I thought, you know, fearing a hole is much like doing auto body work, which is something that I used to do back when I was a teenager. Uh, I restored quite a few old cars. Uh, so one of the things that I remembered were inline sanders. So I purchased this inline sander here, um, which is basically made for auto body work. Now it's a pneumatic tool, and the nice thing about it is that it all runs in line. So it's much easier to control than if it were a belt sander, which would dig in way too fast. So it worked really well to get sort of initial sanding done. It still requires going back and sanding it with the longboard, however. Well, now that the hull is all fared uh, pretty nicely, uh, the next step is to get the stem attached. And once we get that located, then we can start making the keel. All right, so I've got that uh, fastened on there temporarily. Now I cut this uh, stem off at a 45 degree angle so that when I put the keel in there, it'll lock in there and that little scarf joint will help make it nice and even. So the next thing now is to get a piece of timber for the keel.
Once I got the 5 8 by 5 inch board prepared, I then marked out and cut out the slot for the skeg and also for the dagger board. Using a batten, I laid a very nice fair curve starting from the 5 inch wide near the skeg down to the 1.5 inch meeting the stem. Following that contour, I cut a 32 degree bevel. I determined that bevel by coming in 3 eighths of an inch on each side. So I've got the keel pretty well shaped now. Now one of the reasons that I cut this on an angle was so that when the fiberglass comes in here, it doesn't hit a sharp corner and try to bend, which the glass cloth does not want to do. So by putting on a bevel, it will want to ease itself up on there. Now I still have a pretty sharp ridge right here that I'll need to relieve and make it a little rounded. So I'm going to do that with my hand plane. I'm just going to go along and get on the other side here. So you just give that a nice round edge and then I'll sand that nice and smooth. Well, now that I've got that done, we'll uh, offer it up to the boat and see how it fits. Well, I was generally happy with the fit, but I wanted to make sure that where the keel hit the bottom of the boat, that the boat was flat so that I'd ensure that I'd have a good bond between the two. That fits quite nicely. Now I'll uh, put some screws in here also to help hold it down. Um, I'm happy that that bent on there easy enough. Uh, I was a little concerned that I might have to steam it, but it looks like it laid on there quite nicely. So the next step is to uh, take it off and get the stem glued on and then get the keel glued on also.
I'm using Total Boat's High Performance Epoxy, which is a 2 to 1 mixture. I'm using the slow hardener so that I'll have more working time. I also thickened it with some silica thickener. I use this serrated trowel to go over the epoxy. This is the best way to spread thickened epoxy in a nice even coating.
Well, it's been uh, 24 hours now since I got the uh, stem and the keel glued on there. Now, one of the things I did do is I went through and I filled all of the screw holes. Now, you may have seen that I used a drywall screw in a couple of instances where I needed to get it in quickly with my power drill. I removed all of those and put bronze screws in their place. Now, the other thing I did was I cut off the tails that I had left on the keel in order to put that clamp on there. So now that I've got it all uh, ready to go, the next step now is to carve the stem down so it sort of matches the profile of the keel that I have here. And what I'm gonna do is basically do that with my hand plane. And I'm just gonna start working Well, I am pretty happy with the way it's come out. There's still a few little minor spots that I'm finding that I'll touch up later. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a fillet of epoxy along here to make that even, even a more gentle curve there for the fiberglass cloth to fit on there. So we'll have to do all that in the next episode as we're running out of time for this one. So as always, Thanks for watching, and remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.